But let's move on <coughs> to the big boy, the big baby. Um, this is a Cuvelier de los Andes uh, Grand Malbec, vintage 2014. Uh, so this is made by Bordeaux Grand Cru makers. Uh, the Cuvelier family that makes this wine invested uh, in Argentina, but they own uh, Grand Cru classes of Medoc, of uh, Bordeaux estates, top Bordeaux estates, including Leoville Poiferre in Saint Julian. Um, Julian, like me, that's great. Um, so that's a good sign, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but more seriously, uh, this Grand Marbec is fermented in uh, barrels, which is quite rare. Normally, wine is fermented in tank and then matured in barrels. This is fermented straight away in barrels to integrate the oak uh, better and smoothen uh, the tannins uh, firsthand. Um, <clears throat> what else? This is a selection of uh, the best Marbecs from the Cuvelier uh, vineyard, which is a relatively small 115 acres uh, vineyard in Mendoza, in the Valle de Vista Flores, in the Valle de Uco. Um, so, <clears throat> everything says that this should be a very good wine. It's uh, crafted It's with consulting winemaker Michel Roland. A uh, winemaker I actually worked for and with uh, a while ago, top high-end, most famous flying winemaker that makes top wines all around the world in Rioja, in Pomerol, uh, his base uh, in Bordeaux, as well as in Napa Valley, he's behind Arlen Estate and he's behind Dallaver and um, <clears throat> Newton Estate, I think he was involved or he's involved with Screaming Eagle as well, so top top consulting winemakers, everything is lined up for this to be a great wine, let's find out. Um, so, color, perhaps even even darker, the previous one was super dark already, but maybe it's a little denser, it does have a few more orange hues to it, uh, which makes it a bit more profound to look at. The nose is powerful and vibrant, um, much more vibrancy of fruit, uh, surprisingly enough, um, as well as the same depth and maybe even more depth to it. This has got an ashy character to the aromatic profile, so a lot of vibrant raspberry coolie, strawberry jam, ripe cherry, blackberry, um, very dense, lots and loads of sweet spices to the nose, this dark ch ch cocoa, but and this savory ashy character, but the fruit uh, surprisingly is very lively, very expensive as well, so deep, but also very, very fruity, which is fantastic. Um, Let's try it. Wow. So what's striking here is the immense density of tannins, the immense density of tannins, the body and the silky, silky smooth tannins in here. It's certainly another level of density, another level of fine grain tannins. Most definitely, it's much more powerful uh, on the finish as well. And it's got this je ne sais quoi, this strange smoothness, silky, oily body and texture to it. It's almost like clay on your palate. It's very, very, very smooth, which is kind of the mark of uh, high-end, high-end wines. This is getting towards the 95 out of 100 points wine, so definitely high, high up. Um, it's got the big uh, New World expression of fruit together with the refinement and the savoriness from the oak uh, that, that you get more uh, out of Bordeaux in general and sometimes uh, great wines of Napa Valley <clears throat> as well. So definitely a much, much more denser, refined, silky smooth uh, wine. And this is going to be a wine that you can age for much longer as well. I mean, it's 2014, it's four or five years old already. 
uh, but you can definitely see this aging for another 5, 10, 15, perhaps 20 years. Uh, so this is the one you can actually buy a case uh, off and, and sell it. Uh, for for 10 or 15 years and you open a bottle every two or three years so a wine to invest on a wine to cherish uh, a wine for special special occasions mm -hmm.